super massive animals with teeth and claws and fur. And some can swim and fly and crawl, but way more radical is that God who made them is alive and greater than them all. God is.
mountains and the sea Your river runs with love for me And I will open up my heart And let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily lift my hands For I will always see Of when your love came down I could sing of your love forever 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 Over the mountains and the sea your river runs with love for me And I will open up my heart And let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily lift my hands For I will always sing Of when your love came down I could sing of your love forever 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 Oh, I feel like dancing It's foolishness, I know But when the world has seen the lights They will dance with joy Like we're dancing now Dancing late Like we're dancing now They will dance with joy Like we're dancing now I could sing of your love forever Sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever.
Hello there, my name's Sam and I'm the minister here at Melton Mowbray Baptist Church. Welcome to In Touch. On the 18th of March last year, I recorded a message for our Facebook page. Here it is. Hi there, my name's Sam and I'm the minister here at Melton Mowbray Baptist Church. In compliance with advice from the government with regards to the response to the COVID-19 outbreak, we will no longer be physically gathering together as a church. Until further notice, Sunday services, small groups, toddlers and all activities and events in the building are cancelled. However, we remain the people of God and we may remain present to serve our community. Please keep up to date with us through our website and Facebook page where we will give updates and offer support. And do join us on our brand new YouTube channel where we will upload new content every Sunday at 10 a.m., which is our usual service time. My thought is that at 10 a.m. on a Sunday, each of us in our own home will flick on YouTube on our TV, on our screens, however we're going to access it. And then together, as one people, we will join in worship we will join in reading the word. We will join together in prayer. And by the spirit, we will be one. May God bless you at this difficult time. ta -ra. On the Sunday following that recorded message, we all sat down to see the first Sunday content, which was the precursor to In Touch. It was Melton Mowbray Baptist Church's first foray into um, services online. And, uh, and I welcomed you all by saying this. Welcome to our first Sunday content here at MMBC, Melton Mowbray Baptist Church. Welcome. You are so welcome. I pray this morning that you would know the presence of God as you share this time with us. And I pray you would also know the presence of your sisters and brothers as they join you by looking at their screens here, there and everywhere. Quite why I decided to dress up like Oscar Wilde to say that to you. Uh, I'll never know and now it's on the internet forever. So there we are. Uh, but I tried to do a bit of a tribute to it by dressing up slightly smartly for today. This week, we have been living under the restrictions and legislation that surround the coronavirus pandemic for a year. This Sunday, we have produced content for our online Sundays. Every Sunday, bar one, for a year. Not many of us expected to do that but it is what we have done. Today, we're going to reflect. We're going to pray. We're going to revisit a few things. We're going to thank God for what he has done. We're going to weep for what we have lost. And we're going to pray for a brighter future. God has been with us through this year. And our first song declares that. Let's sing together our first song, Guardian. Paul, take it away.
Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in green pastures. He leads me to calm water. He gives me new strength. He leads me on paths that are right for the good of his name. Even if I walk through a very dark valley, I will not be afraid because you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a meal for me in front of my enemies. You pour oil on my head. You fill my cup to overflowing. Surely your goodness and love will be with me all my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. One of the reasons I believe the 23rd Psalm is potentially the most popular is because it encompasses the variety of life and tells us that in all circumstances God is still there with us as our protector and guide. The psalm talks about times where we are in green pastures and content but it also talks about times where we will be sat surrounded by enemies And it talks about times where we will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Those difficult moments of life. But how on the journey God is with us. This past year has been quite the journey. We have gone through many seasons within the space of these 12 months. We have lost, we have gained, we have been hopeful, our hopes have been dashed on the rocks. In this moment, I want you to bring to God the valleys, to recognize that he was with us through them. 
there'll be some music playing and your screen will go dark. And in the darkness of your screen and as you listen to the music, I invite you to bring the hurt and the pain, the grief and the sorrow that this year has brought to God and know that he is your shepherd. He was with you throughout it and he is big enough to hear your anger and pain. Loving Father God, we hand our tribulations to you. We recognise they were already in your hands, but here we consciously hand them to you. We thank you that you were with us throughout, but we acknowledge the pain and the scars that these experiences have left behind. Thank you that through Jesus Christ, you know what it is to carry the pain and scars of human experience. May we know his presence with us now. Amen. We're going to sing our next song now. And uh, the song is accompanied by a painting inspired by the 23rd Psalm that Miriam did for us. So I hope that you enjoy that.
So it was just over a year ago, with only a few hours notice that Steve Marriott came down to the church and introduced me to this camera that we, I'm using to record this today, he showed me how to use a camera, uh, how to get the SD card out, how to link up a microphone, how to light myself, lessons that I've uh, forgotten and had to relearn along the way. Steve, I know that. Thank you for being so patient with me. So with about three hours notice, we got together uh, to film what you're about to see. And, and we also filmed a message to go live on the day that we launched our YouTube channel. And I didn't really have time to prepare in the way that I usually have time to prepare. So all I did was prepare myself and then come to the passage and what you see and what you're about to see again um, is me coming to the passage in front of the camera and I spoke on Jesus calming the storms but where where I ended up was the overriding message of Jesus being in the boat with us through the storms and actually at any moment he can choose to, to calm the storms this storm has gone on longer than I expected at the time. And I, as I watch it, you know, I, you, you can see that I do realize that, that something big is happening and that I'm finding it quite painful, but um, I'm very grateful that God did not reveal to us then uh, what we would have walked through in the next 12 months because I'm, I'm not sure I wouldn't have run away with my tail between my legs. Uh, this was the first Sunday message. And I think it speaks to us just as powerfully today. I don't know if any of you have ever found yourself uh, in a storm. Rose always recounts the story when I, uh, I strapped Elsie to my back and I forced her out uh, up and around Malham Cove and down Gordale Scar, which is a waterfall, basically a precipice that you have to walk down. And, uh, and the clouds came in and the wind, it blew and, um, and it was awful. It was an awful day. We had a lovely time. Uh, and one day I'll, I'll show you all the pictures of me heading down this vertical drop uh, with Elsie strapped onto my back. But it's not pleasant being in a storm, particularly if you don't know where you're going and if the wind is really whipping up hard. I don't know if any of you have ever been sailing. This story doesn't make me seem any better either. <laughs> After a few years of not being sailing, I had this brilliant idea of taking my new wife, Rose, out in a boat with me. Uh, because I had some lessons when I, was, uh, uh, when I was little and obviously I knew what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, it takes a little while to get your head around what was happening again. And before long, I had capsized the boat, jumping up and down on the dagger board. Now, if you end up in this situation, may I suggest that you don't take Rose with you? Because all she did was laugh at me. And uh, and I felt very foolish. So, so I, I, I must confess, I threw her out of the boat for five minutes and I remembered how to work it. And then we had a lovely day on the water. There's lots of stories about Jesus in boats. Lots of his disciples were fishermen and they were really used to being out at sea. The Lake of Galilee, where they did a lot of their fishing and where their boats would have been moored, was quite famous for uh, whipping up storms out of absolutely nowhere because of where it was geographically. Uh, the valley around it would just funnel the wind down and suddenly, even though this was a lake which isn't particularly tidal, it would just get absolutely whipped up with foam and waves and wind. And, uh, and these sailors would have known exactly what was going on. So I'm going to read us a story now, and it's from the Bible. Um, you can find it, if you'd like to, in Matthew 8 or Mark 4 or Luke 8. It is in all of those places if you would like to read it um, in the, from your own Bible at home. But uh, right now, I'm going to read it to you from the children's Bible. At the end of the day spent healing the sick, Jesus pointed to a nearby boat. He told his disciples, come with me, we'll cross to the other side. 
It was his only chance of getting away from the crowds. Jesus was tired. He needed to rest. At first, the water was calm. A few of the disciples looked up at the sky. This should be an easy boat ride, one said. Don't count on it. You know how this sea can turn wild. For now, though, I'll give you it. It does look calm, said another. The disciples moved off to different parts of the boat. It only seemed like a few moments later when they felt the boat nearly go over. They must have been caught in the middle of a storm. All at once, they felt afraid. One ran to grab hold of the rudder. The wind kept changing. Several times, men slipped. They scuttled towards the edge, but they managed to cling on and they didn't fall in. The sides of the boat kept them from falling into the lake. Waves broke over both sides of the boat at once. Men scurried back and forth. The skipper wrestled with the rudder. The boat tilted madly from one side to the other. The men felt absolutely helpless. They looked at each other. We have got to get Jesus. When they saw him asleep on a cushion, they woke Jesus up. Teacher, the sea is wild. This is a terrible storm. We'll never reach the other side in one piece. Save us. Jesus looked from one troubled face to the other. Then he got up. Jesus spread his arms wide. The wind blew hair into his face. His voice boomed. Be still. As soon as Jesus called out, quiet, be still, the wind calmed. The water flattened. Peter ran to the edge of the deck. He looked overboard. He saw his reflection mirrored in the dark sea. He ran back to Jesus and fell on his knees in relief. Jesus said, Why are you afraid? Do you not have more faith? The disciples looked at one another and thought to themselves, what kind of man is this? That even the wind and the waves listen to the sound of his voice. It's lovely as the children's Bible, isn't it? We find ourselves caught in storms at different times in our lives. Sometimes the storms are very real and very physical. Other times they are the storms of our own fear in our head. The reason the disciples were scared is because they forgot who was in the boat with them. The number one thing that Jesus says to his disciples in his gospel, over and over again he says it, is do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Why? For I, Jesus, am with you. The di disciples were scared because they forgot who was in the boat. When we allow ourselves to be afraid, the reason we are afraid is because we have forgotten who is in our boat. Yes, the storms rage. Yes, the wind cuts against our skin. Yes, it is difficult to be sat in my study and not be stood 
in front of you in church like we should be. Yes, it is heartbreaking that the children aren't going to hand out daffodils. It is sad. But we needn't be afraid because Jesus remains in the boat. We needn't be afraid because Jesus remains who he is. The one who the wind and the storm listen to. The one who nature responds to his command. The one who created everything anyway. We needn't be afraid because in the boat with us is the saviour of the world. The one who came to this place to understand what it is to be a human, to understand what it is to be afraid. He is stood next to us in the boat. In the midst of this storm, if we just turned our eyes to one side, we would see Jesus. And what is his demeanour? Well, he's lied down on a cushion. He's chilled out. He's literally waiting for us to ask for his help. In the midst of the storm, it is easy to forget that Jesus is present. But when we remember that Jesus is present, it is possible for the storm to melt away. I am sad I am not with you. I feel like my heart is being broken time and time again. But I'll tell you what, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Because I've got my fellow passengers. And I have the saviour of the world in my boat with me. God bless you. I love you. But he loves you more. Amen. In many ways, that message was, was a promise. It was a declaration of faith that Christ would be with us through the storm. Now a year on, we have the privilege of looking back in hindsight and seeing that Christ was true to that promise. There is so much that we can be thankful for over the past year, notwithstanding the pain. And as I look back at the moments of greatest panic, I was able to find peace when I turned my head to one side and remembered and realised that Christ was there with me. One of the things you might not know as you watch that video is at that moment in time, I was beginning a panic attack and I, I didn't know what a panic attack was. Uh, I never understood it before. Rose had, Rose had suffered from them in the past. And um, I actually had a panic attack that lasted for a fortnight and I didn't know what was happening. I was very, very afraid of what was going on in my body, what was going on in my mind. And it's because all, 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 I could, all I could see in that moment of crisis was decisions that I had to make and responsibilities that I had. Now, let me tell you what was helpful in ending that. Well, it was realising what was happening to my body, what was happening in my brain. It was having someone as loving as Rose who gave me the space and, uh, and the understanding to deal with that situation. But about two weeks in, I looked to one side and I saw that Christ was with me and I realised that he was in the boat and that he was guiding us through this storm and that, and that he loved Melton Mowbray Baptist Church. And actually, yes, I have responsibilities for the life of the church. Yes, I had to make decisions. 
you know, along with others. But Christ in the boat, he's the true captain. And he, he didn't bring us out on the sea to drown. If anything, he, uh, he called us to this place to walk on water. The next song that we're gonna sing is Never Once. It's one of the early ones that we recorded with the band. I love the song. But whilst we're singing it and we're declaring that never once did we ever walk alone, I invite you to reflect over the last 12 months and think if there are any special moments where you noticed that Christ was in the boat. Are there any special times through the last year where you have known Christ to be there with you? If there are, and I'm sure there must be, then give him praise. Give him the praise that is due to him. Let's sing together. Never once. Standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you battleground seeing just how much you've done knowing every victory was your power in us scars and troubles on the way but with joy our hearts can say yes our hearts can Our experiences over the last year bring us confidence to look forward with hope. 
because even though our last year has been difficult God has been with us and we as a community have met the challenges that the year has brought to our door our hopes our dreams in Christ can therefore grow and we can be expectant for so much more than we have been expectant for in the past because we have seen the favour and the empowering of Almighty God. As I look forward, I am hopeful and I know whatever storm comes after this, that Christ is in the boat with us and his empowering is upon us. And I cannot wait to see what our emergence from these current restrictions looks like and all that God will do with Melton Mowbray Baptist Church. Over the coming weeks, you'll find in my weekly email that comes out to you, the, a sharing of the roadmap out of this for us as a church the different things that are going to open up at different times. In this week's email, you, will have found, you, you should have found all that's going on during Holy Week and all that will uh, begin to take place after that. I am excited and I hope that you are excited too. God has been good to us. God is good to us. And God will be good to us. It's a strange thing to look back, particularly in a year when many of us will have lost people that we loved. As a family, we certainly did. And I know that there are other families in the church and we know that we as a church lost our dear friend Johnny. I invite you into a moment of quiet now where you can remember those you have lost in the last 12 months. Let's pray together. Loving Father God, we thank you for all of those people who we have loved and lost over the past year. Thank you for their impact upon our lives. Thank you that they have not left us unchanged. Thank you for all that they have been to us. Lord, as we remember them and grieve them, may we know your comfort, your presence and your peace. And Lord, for those of us grieving those who are long gone, I ask exactly the same. Loving Father, we thank you for all that you have been for us, all that you have done for us, and all that you have given us over the past year. We thank you for your empowering, your presence, and the way in which you have spoken to us. Lord, we praise you for the way in which you have been with Melton Mowbray Baptist Church, spoken to Melton Mowbray Baptist Church and spurred on Melton Mowbray Baptist Church. Lord, we pray your blessing on our work as we seek to return to in-person 
celebrations, services, ministries, and outreach. Lord, we pray that you would bless us with your protection, that you would bless us with the words to say, that you would bless us with the structures that will serve as well for the years to come. Lord, we say you are Lord of the return to physical gathering in every sense. And we ask that we would listen to you and be patient hearing your word and your voice over all that we seek to do. We ask that in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Behind me, work for the Roman Gate uh, housing development is coming on at pace. There are terraces in, we can see pipes for sewage, we can see all of the different amenities being put in. The work that is taking place to make the fields opposite us a harvest field of human beings that need to meet Jesus Christ is taking place right now. And I, I think it's really good for us to pray over the Roman Gate development. And I invite you at home to pray for the Roman Gate development over the next 60 seconds. And please, please, please keep praying for the Roman Gate development over the coming week. Pray that men and women of the faith would move on to that estate. Pray that they would choose to worship with us so that they would be links to the church. Uh, pray that God would show us how we are to relate to the estate and show us how to be salt and light uh, in the place that he has rooted us. And thank God uh, that he gave the church the prophetic vision to move their building here for such a time of this where it would be surrounded by a ready-made community. So over the next 60 seconds, I invite you to pl pray for the Roman Gate development. Over the past year, the Melton Fields estate that is behind me uh, was finished and the final few houses have become occupied. And we thank God for bringing this harvest field right next to the place that the church prophetically built their building. It is amazing that that is the case. Uh, and we continue to pray for this estate and pray for our links with this estate. Over the next 60 seconds, I invite you to pray for the Milton Fields housing estate, to pray blessing on the families that are there and to ask God to show us the ways in which we can relate to them, deepen relationships with them and introduce them to Jesus Christ. So 60 seconds, let's pray, off you go.
loving Father God, show us the church that we need to be to reach these estates with your life-giving message of hope. And may we be humble enough to be transformed by the presence of your Holy Spirit, by your word and by your leading to become that church so that many would be saved, so that many could come home and be in deep relationship with you. Lord, help us to see the harvest field and help us to be the workers to bring in the harvest, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. It's wonderful to pray for our neighbours and our, uh, our soon-to-be neighbours, but we can also get into action uh, this week. On Palm Sunday, we're going to be delivering to every house on the Mel Melton Fields estate some daffodils, some cream eggs and an Easter card, and we need your help to do it. If you feel like that is something that you want to get involved in, you want to be involved in starting to build that relationship with our nearest neighbours here at the church building, then get in touch with John Sharp and he will let you know when it's happening, how it's happening. You can find his email address and his phone number in the weekly email, or if you're a church member, you can find it in the directory. But let's not just pray for our neighbours, let's actively show them our love and give them a blessing in the name of Almighty God. By faith we see the hand of God In the light of creation's grand design
thank you for being with us this week. It's been a real privilege and pleasure to look back and look and think about, reflect upon, pray about all that we have gone through over the last year. I hope that you found it helpful too. Uh, I've spoken a lot today, but actually we have all been through this process and this time. And one of the things that I think it's important that we do as a church and as a society is to really understand what we've gone through. Uh, so I invite you today to join in with a project that we're going to be doing as a church, which is pulling together our memories and experiences of church during the pandemic. Uh, I, I'm inviting you to think about it, to write something down. And if you would like to be involved, then I would love to record a minute, a minute and a half with you, just speaking to the camera about part of your experience. So if you'd like to be involved with that, then please, please email me at sam at mmbc.org.uk. And here's the important thing. This is not just for members of Melton Mowbray Baptist Church. This is not just for people in Melton Mowbray. It is for anyone that has connected with anything that we have done throughout this time. We want to hear your voice because this is a historic moment. God has been speaking to us and I feel that it's right for us to mark that and document it in the way that we're going to do that because the way we've documented everything during this year is through film is with a film documentary that will include interviews and your memories. So please, please, please get in touch with me uh, if you would like to be involved in that. And the more people that are involved in that, the more videos that we have, the better. Uh, I hope that you are looking forward to next week. We have got Holy Week coming up. You've had some information about, uh, about that in the uh, weekly email. There is so much that we can look forward to and it's great to be able to say that. And I, I invite you for the rest of the day to live in that moment, to live in a moment of hopeful joy, looking forward to a tomorrow. That is, better, that is better than I yesterday. Until I see you again, I will miss you, but God will be with you. I love you, but he loves you more. Just a quick word on that sign off. In the message that you saw earlier, you saw the creation of that. I didn't know what I was supposed to say to anyone at the end of it and those words came out of my mouth and I think that these are words that will follow me throughout the rest of my life so I thank God for them and I, um, I, I just thank you all for the privilege of being able to say them to you every week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. Oh, He has done great things. Oh, Hero of Heaven, You conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, You have done great things. We dance in Your freedom. Awaken the light. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, Your name lifted high. Oh, God, You have done great things. Oh, You've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things, and I know you will do it again, for your promise is yes and amen, you will do great things, oh, oh God, you do great things, oh, oh hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captain and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great Chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Oh, oh God, you do great things. You didn't want heaven without us 
Jesus. 